How are you going, mate? Yeah, very good, TJ. Very good, good. good show so far. Nice very mind, good show. <laughs> Can't wait for Christian Salem to come up. Oh, I know. He will be coming up very, very shortly. But first, we've got some breaking news from the best newsbreaker in the business. Oh, it's, it's from Jackie Reid, actually, <laughs> TJ. Yeah, oh. North Melbourne <laughs> players. Just, OK, well, thank you, Jackie. Yeah. I'm just trying to pump you up, don't no, I'm, I'm trying to pump Jackie up, because uh, yeah. she's told us that players and staff of North Melbourne have been told to isolate at home, to get tested and to await a negative result after being at the Tier 2 exposure site at Melbourne Airport yesterday that were being between 7 and 8 a.m. on their way to play the Gold Coast in Hobart. Jackie, of course, one of our producers here on the Sunday Footy Show and also a colleague at 3 Yep, Does a great job, Jackie. And just gave Damo that breaking news there that Damo tried to take credit for. Anyway, so uh, we, will, we will actually talk to uh, Jack Zebel live and yep. he'll give us some more information about that. In the meantime, tell us about this match uh, last night. It was a really enjoyable game of football last night. The Bombers gave a real scare to Melbourne. Uh, <laughs> and, you yeah, see, Jordan kicked two goals, Petrarca two, Oliver Brilliant. Merritt, some of his foot skills last night were as good as you'll see in the comp and Jones continues to grow uh, with the Bombers. But uh, Christian Salem, I think TJ, if we were putting an all-Australian side together, he'd be the first pick on the really? half-back flank, in my opinion, yep. with the season that he's had. Another dominant display last night. Ten marks. Christian, thanks for joining us this morning. And uh, last night they did give you a scare. But uh, still, I wanted to ask you the question about what you learnt from that Collingwood loss because it was great to get the four points again last night. Thanks for having me, guys. Um, yeah, the Collingwood game was pretty disappointing um, the way that we finished towards the bye, and um, we got beaten in all areas of our game. So um, for us, it was a good chance to reset over the bye and um, try and get back to our best football. Well, when you're playing for the Bombers, you've got to try and... I heard Max Gorn after the game say, we had to keep it in tight, make it a clearance stoppage game, and they start to worry for periods in that you know, first and second quarter with their run on the outside. Yeah, the first half... Um, obviously not the way we planned. We knew they wanted to uh, go fast and use the corridor and um, at times we gave it to them. I think Stringer ran out of the centre of the square about three or four times. And, um, you know, we just addressed that at half time to try and get back to our fourth half game and um, really ramp up the pressure around the ball. Just your belief in your own system. Uh, I heard Simon Goodwin speak after the game. So Merritt had 26 at half time, which is record pace, but you weren't too worried about him. You're more worried about those dangerous entries. When do you decide what is threatening and what isn't? Because Essendon had a lot of the footy last night. Yeah, they did. I guess it's a fine balance. And um, for us, if it, if it is starting to hurt us, we have, um, I guess, tricks up our sleeve. We have Harmsy and Vines who could go to do a tagging role. Um, but for us, we just backed in our system, and that's been great what Goody and the assistant coaches have, uh, I guess, allowed us to do um, throughout games. And, um, yeah, they did again last night. Hibbard went to Jake Stringer at times last night. He was the match winner last week, Jake Stringer. Very good again last night, but it was a really good battle between the two. Yeah, it was. Um, he started very well, and, um, you know, we had to make a few adjustments from the half time with you know, how much of a quality player he is. And um, that second quarter, he started to damage us a bit. He was sort of roaming in and out of stoppages. And um, I guess they did cause a bit of confusion amongst us. And, um, you know, we just gave him the role um, full time, I guess, in the second half. And um, he executed it pretty well. Christian, as we uh, look at what he did last night, another key cog to the uh, the whole Melbourne operation has been Christian Petrarca. Had the personal breakout season of 2020, evolved again in 2021. What have you noticed with what he's doing this year that, that's, that's been different to uh, to the previous seasons with him? Um, yeah, I guess we all know what he can do with the ball, but um, his growth this year has come from off leadership and, um, I guess, leading without the ball. Um, and not only him, but I could reel off all the names. Um, we've really invested in the team defence and um, we're all, all trying to help each other out on the field. So um, that's sort of been the biggest improvement in his game and um, a lot of others too. That team defence won you the game last night, I thought, uh, Christian. It was a difference in the match. But I want to ask you about the other end, the forward line. What, what does Ben Brown need to do to earn a spot in this side at Melbourne, you think? Yeah, I guess obviously last night we did go a bit smaller and, um, you know, Weeds was in last week and he's obviously in the VFL today. But, yeah, I guess they're all in decent form and, um, you know, I guess it's, it depends the way we want to set up, to be honest. And, you know, we know what qualities Brownie could bring and, you know, he's playing off for no pre-season really. So, um, you know, when he's been in the team, he's actually done pretty well. So I'm sure chances will come for not only him, but... Um, weeds as well, so they've got to be ready, I guess. Christian Collingwood are looking for a coach. Often the good sides get picked off a little bit with their assistants. Adam Uze is a name that has been brought up this morning. Um, what are his credentials like, and do you think he'd make a good senior coach? Yeah, uze has been great. Um, obviously, he's working with the midfield um, pretty closely, and 
um, just the way he sees the game has been, um, you know, it's really caught my eye and, um, you know, he's doing a lot of good stuff at training in terms of simplifying the way we want to play and um, I guess trying to capitalise on our, our Gorney and our midfielders. If you were doing the votes last night, how many would you give yourself? Um, <laughs> there was a few boys that were pretty good, I guess. Maisie was good, Jack was good, so we'll see what happens. OK, well, let's find oh, out. Oh, you've thrown me under a bus there. <laughs> oh, no. There'll be no freebies at his cafe at the Spree in Brighton. Uh, oh, oh, okay, no, okay. Okay. No, no, no. I'm only joking. Uh, Zach Merritt, uh, 41 disposals, loved his game. Lever and May to me uh, were the difference in this game. I know the Melbourne midfield is going really well as well, and, and I thought Clayton Oliver was the best Melbourne midfield on the ground. But as I said before, Christian is having a great year and should be in the All Australians. And uh, look, before we get to the prize pack, uh, where's the family cafe? Uh, Lordo said it's down at Brighton, which obviously he frequents it, does he? <laughs> yeah, he does. Um, <laughs> yeah, we do. We have one at North Road, um, North Point, another one around the corner at Roxholt at uh, Bay Street. So they're starting to get busy again post COVID. So get down when you can. Absolutely. Support your local business. Didn't get the votes, TJ, but he does get Lou's prize pack, which is more, most important. A do dozen Callaway Chrome soft goals for you, Christian, and an Odyssey Tour Tower. The Travis Matthews caps, four of them. That's four to keep a lid on it at the golf course. Our friends at Aquila, great supporters of this show for so long. A pair of those from the top of the range shoe collection, kicking goals since 1958, if you don't mind. The Bar Fridges from Bar Fridges Australia are a bar fridge, thanks to them, still cooling the beers of a nation. The Rick's Eyewear, use the code word, that man chompers at rickseyewear.com for 20% discount. Platform 28, magnificent down there. Dinner for two at the favourite restaurant, Platform 28. Docklands, the best spot for a pre-match frothy and AMFX and your very own custom fire pit, thanks to AMFX. Speak to Alan and the team. They're 100% Australian made. TJ. OK, terrific stuff. Christian, uh, all the best for the remainder of the season. And uh, who knows, we might be talking to you in September. Late September. Appreciate it, guys. Right, thank me. you, Christian Salem, joining us there.